Welcome everyone, my name is Danuta Siemek and this is the segment three of the video series all about anger. We're going to talk about third components of the interplay when we're in an angry state. Remember there is a changes in biology, there is a changes in our cognition and there is also usually the high level of intensity of anger leads into some kind of action. Remember anger is a feeling, violence is a behavior, it's an action. So how we process, how this angry feeling translates into behavior? Well, it can translate in two different ways. Some people will express anger, so the anger can be expressed or suppressed. Anger can be expressed, it's visible to everybody, or suppressed. Well, when the anger is suppressed, it's also visible, but it's not as obvious that it's anger-based behavior. So when anger is expressed, we can express in two different ways. We can express as an aggressive behavior, or we can express as a passive-aggressive behavior. Aggressive behavior is not just physical violence. We all know that physical violence is a felony, and we can be in castle, it's actually can be, it's a criminal offense. And I happened to work for four years with people who committed, men and women who committed violent crimes. So, you know, there are long sentences. A lot of people, folks like you and I, are really mindful about the physical violence. And sometimes we can actually stop ourselves in committing violent crimes. However, I know that a lot of violence happens behind a closed door. And because people really don't want to talk about this, you know, partners, wives, children don't really want to cause any problems. So a lot of violent crimes gets unreported. But physical violence is only just one way to express our violent behavior. What about psychological violence? What about those assaults into our heart over and over and over again? The put-downs, the criticism, the judgment. How about sarcasm? You know that sarcasm is anger-based? So what about verbal violence? What about, what about financial violence? trying to control, you know, you, men controlling women, or women controlling men, or everybody controlling each other, you know, how much you spend, looking at the bank statements, why did you spend this? That's control, that is violence, that is not natural behavior. So there's, the, you know, could be even religious violence, you know, could be spirit, any way that we want, that we want to, Intimidate, control, overpower other people is considered violence. But of course, we usually talk about physical violence, but please remember that it's not the only way that we express our aggression, our, our angry feeling. Another way, another way to express anger is passive anger. Why we become passive and not really saying things that we want to say, <coughs> excuse me, Perhaps, you know, anger wasn't appropriate in our home. Perhaps we couldn't really become angry. Anger was perceived as something wrong and bad. And we never seen my, our mom and dad angry, our caregivers. You know, there's so many ways why we decide not to express our anger. Uh, perhaps our, we just don't want to be that person who is considered angry all the time or violent or saying mean things. So the motivation could come from different places. Remember, we're seeking pleasure, avoiding pain. So we can be very composed in the way. It doesn't mean that we're less angry. It means that we've got a different way to facilitate the anger. So the way we're expressing anger in a passive aggressive way, it looks like mm, maybe we're not answering the question. Maybe conveniently our phone just ran out of of battery, maybe we weren't in a place that there wasn't any reception, maybe we withdraw our attention to someone, maybe we withdraw our affection to other people, maybe when we ask of our opinion we could say, I don't care, and then you say, oh why did you do this, why, well you ask, well I didn't know how, you know, there's, there's this confusion about passive aggressive anger, so that's the expression of anger. Anger is also known as a secondary emotion. I'm going to spend a few minutes on that because what we're seeing as anger 
it really, we're seeing anger, we're seeing aggressive or passive anger. However, it's not a first emotion that people experience. And I'd like to turn to you to imagine a tree. Underneath the ground level, where there are roots, there are all kinds of feelings. And so we're hiding behind anger. We're hiding our true, authentic, vulnerable feelings behind anger. Let's say that someone hurt our feelings. Could be through the actions or could be through, through, through the verbal comments, you know, and we feel hurt. And instead of saying, hey, I'm feeling hurt right now, you really hurt my feelings. You know, some people just totally incapable of saying this. Oh, you know what? Another explanation is they're not aware what is the authentic feeling, what is the first feeling that came up, that showed up for them. So what we're really seeing is anger. So you immediately go into, into counterattack. You immediately go into creating some kind of fight. Rather than saying that you hurt my feeling, you become angry and attack. And like we say, that attack is the best defense. And in this situation, that's very true. You know, another feeling that, we, another emotion and feeling that we might not be seeing, which is, you know, beneath the ground level is maybe abuse. You know, if you find just, if you've been abused as a kid, if you experience any kind of sexual, verbal, psychological, physical abuse, you are not going to walk around and announce this to the, to, to the world. So when you find yourself in the situation that remotely is similar to the abuse you experienced, you are going to attack again with anger. So when we're seeing anger, it's not the first feeling that you might be experiencing. You could be protecting yourself from that, you know, the, that, the, the, you could be protecting yourself from the memory that you have from your childhood. Another feeling could be shame. You know, if someone is criticizing you, if something is judging you, and you feel this deep sense of shame, like, oh my goodness, you know, I haven't done my best, and people saying, you know, I expected more from you. You know, I really have high expectations. You've got talents. You know, when we talk to our children a lot of the time, there is so much shame in our vocabulary. We say, you're smart, you're talented. Look what I'm doing for you. You know, and we're shaming them. And, and the child might just walk out and slam the door. You know, they cannot handle this, this shame. They might not be also aware that they've been just shamed and they not really handle this uncomfortable, vulnerable, uh, we say negative emotions. So they reach to anger as I remember, more powerful, more in control emotion, more dominant emotion. You also might be experiencing guilt, you know. Some people are good in really making you feel guilty. And again, because you haven't delivered something, you haven't done something, that you haven't met the bar, you haven't really met the expectation. So they try to make you feel guilty. And once again, you're going to defend yourself because you don't want to say, I feel really guilty, you know. I re I'm really experiencing a lot of vulnerability right now and guilt. And so you might not be aware of it, or you just don't want to admit what you're really feeling. Another feeling is that, you know, another feeling, there's so many feelings, there's not, that there's impossible for me to name them all, but just the more obvious ones, the ones that I worked with, like the fear of rejection, you know, why didn't you call? Why didn't you tell me you're going to be late? Why you decide to hang out with your friends all the time rather than spending some time with your family? You know, there will be a rejection, there will be a sense of rejection. And when the husband or wife come home and you just immediately attack them, you know, in the doorway. And that will, you know, spark a, a verbal altercation, could even lead to some physical actions, you know. So you're not really communicating your true authentic, inter authentic feelings. You, you're communicating with anger. You know, there could be self-esteem issues, you know, someone is treating you less than and your self-esteem is really low. You know, another feeling that we're talking about is the feeling of inade inadequacy, which could be an authentic first feeling that we're going to. So if you don't deliver, if your husband or wife or your friend or your mother or your son or your daughter is, is actually saying that, you know, I expected this and that and you have, you know, maybe you can't buy them the newest iPod or you can't really, you know, upgrade the the television or flat screen, you can't buy them toys, you know, whatever situation you might encounter, rather than saying a sense of inadequacy, 
it come up for you rather than just saying, you know, how you're feeling and explaining the situation, you might really, you know, attack them with what they have and remind them how lucky they are and so on. So, on. so um, you know, this is how we're expressing our anger. This is the third component of the anger state. You know, anger can be expressed or anger can be suppressed. suppressed. Anger is expressed in so many different ways and the next video segment is going to talk about anger being suppressed and this is going to be a separate segment because, um, because there's a lot going on when we're suppressing our anger and we're engaging in all kinds of other behaviors. Thank you for watching and see you in video number four.